Today we're talking about the top five breweries in America. Well, at least the contiguous America. We're covering everywhere from the Pacific Northwest down to Florida. And when you're a scumbag YouTuber, you're gonna accumulate a lot of footage over the years. And sometimes I forget of all the cool places I've been to. I've been to all over Europe, Spain, Madrid, Alicante, back and forth, Stockholm, Sweden, where every girl is a 10, but they're also robots who don't talk to you. Berlin, Germany, England, the Caribbean, South America. I've been to breweries all over the world. See, I was a late bloomer. I didn't turn 21 years old until I turned 21 years old, and I hit puberty only a year or two before that. But that didn't stop me from mapping out some places to check out when I became of legal age. Now I'm of legal age, and there are some magical breweries on this planet. But this planet is way too big for this video, so we're just going to focus on my favorite breweries here in the United States. But quick insight, if I had to pick two cities to check out outside of the U.S., well, if you're going to Europe, it's got to be Prague. It's got the best beer, and it's like a dollar. I have no clue how anybody makes money, but that's not our problem. And my next favorite city outside the U.S. is Colonia del Sacramento in Uruguay. It's like a cheaper version of Europe in South America. America, that's the cleanest city you will ever encounter. Every building looks hand built from a thousand years ago and all the streets are cobblestone. I haven't been there in five years and when I was there the craft beer was all kind of malty. But if you throw half your clothes away and refill it with clothes from my merch store then I'll go down there again this summer. As you know all proceeds will go to my traveling expenses, my penis reduction surgery, and all the families who survived the Y2K crisis. Alright so let's get into the top five breweries in the United States. But we need to lay down some guidelines. There are certain rules. Couple rules. I'm not listing any breweries from San Diego, California or Knoxville, Tennessee. I just want to keep this video as organic as possible. I've got way too many barrages in each city. I lived in San Diego my whole life up until 2022. I think the population of San Diego is in between somewhere six and seven billion people. And I think one in three people in San Diego own breweries. So I just want to stay away from that. And as far as Knoxville goes, I've been here for almost two years now. So I've got my local watering holes, my favorite bartenders, my favorite places to drink. So I'm just staying away from all that stuff. Just want to stay away from the two cities I've lived in. Rule number two, menus got to be small. There's way too many breweries that have 30, 40, or 50 beer options written in shitty purple chalk on black dry erase board. I just can't do it. If there's a line, I walk in, there's 50 things up there, I just take off. Can't do it. For those who have ever been out with me, whether it's food or drinks, half the time, I don't even look at the menu. What do you guys sell the most of? What's your most popular hazy? What's your most popular sour? What's your most popular steak or chicken option? Let me get that. It's just getting ridiculous at this point. Breweries need to have 10 or 12 beers on tap. That's it, nothing more. You're just devaluing your other products. I went to the Cheesecake Factory the other night. Have you seen their menu? It's a book. I need a Wikipedia or Cliff Notes just to order food. My heart goes out to all the servers at Cheesecake Factory. People need to study the menu for an hour. Then the customer's gonna ask the server 21 questions. It sucks for everybody. The server, the customer, the people waiting, the chefs, everybody. Less is more if it comes to food or booze. There are good breweries out there with way too many options. Just get rid of half your menu and you could have made this list. More in and out menus. In and out, in and out. Rule number three, the kids and the dogs. People think I hate kids and dogs, but I don't. I love kids and dogs. Ow, ow, are any of you up for adoption? <laughs> Can I still be up for adoption? But as far as breweries go, it's weird for everybody else without the kids and the dogs. I understand that the new wave of breweries is to bring the whole family in, but that just creates a Chuck E. Cheese environment. I get it. Two birds, one stone. Watch the kids hit a new brewery. That's like bringing beer into church. I get it, you're doing two things at once, but it's definitely weird watching some dad drink five or six mugs of West Coast IPA and then drive the Little League team home after he's been drinking for a few hours. What does this dad think this is? The 90s? And as far as dogs go, man, it's a dog. It's not the dog's fault or the kid's fault. It's the owner's fault. Hey, this is my emotional support dog. Yeah, let's bring in this scared and skittish 14-year-old German shepherd into this room with 200 random strangers who are all drunk and loud. Great idea. How come you only see these emotional support animals at breweries? Never the post office, never the grocery store, never anywhere essential. I always see these dogs at bars and breweries and 
titty bars. Literally the least essential place anybody needs to be. And I'm from California, the self-entitled capital of the world. And where do you draw a line in the sand with dogs? I mean, I've got cats. Why can't I bring them to a brewery? All 40 of them. I'll make little vests that say rescue or service or some bullshit. I've got a buddy who's got a five foot Komodo dragon monitor lizard thing. Yeah, an emotional support monitor lizard. You mind if he brings this baby dinosaur to a brewery? Even though it can bite your index finger off in the flash of an eye, it's still a pretty small chance. And then like every dumb pet owner, you gotta take your animal and walk it through this whole 10,000 square foot establishment and introduce it to every dog and human and everything else for whatever reason. And you don't have to do that. I don't know why people do that. If you have to bring your dog, just sit outside and just hang out in that area. Just stay in your little space. Trust me guys, I've been around. And when it comes to the dog thing, it's an if, not a win. After you've seen your fourth or fifth dog fight, dogs biting dogs, dogs biting kids, dogs biting people, and all these lawyers and lawsuits are now involved, it's just not worth it. Let's get rid of the entitlement. There's more people living on planet Earth than just dog owners. All right. Let's talk about some of the best breweries in America. Number five. All right, the first place we're going to is the Lone Star State, but more specifically, Austin, Texas. And Austin is definitely known for their football, their barbecue, and more importantly, their beer. I think. And if you've watched my channel and seen some of my travel vlogs, you know that craft beer is at different speeds from city to city. Some cities are up and coming with their craft beer scene, and some cities are just struggling brutally. But that's a whole other video. But fortunately, Austin is in a great spot. When I was in Austin, all the breweries were flourishing except for one. And when they say that everything is bigger in Texas, it's true. Breweries in Austin have giant stages, giant brew houses, giant kitchens, and even look at this giant fan. And there was quite a handful of breweries I noticed that. 30 barrel systems and for those who are unaware that's a huge batch of beer you need to be selling a ton of beer to have a 30 barrel system but if i had to pick my favorite brewery in austin it would have to be lazarus brewing co it's got a great vibe in a rad part of downtown austin no chucky e. cheese environment with pound puppies just everything you want for in craft beer great ambiance great beer and they even had great coffee and this is a part of austin where you can walk to a bunch of other breweries and establishments lazarus brewing austin texas put this on your radar number four we're gonna head down to Florida for this one and I was in Florida last year and I'll tell you what it is hot You are forced to drink beer. Florida seems like a great place to own a craft brewery You Brages and I met up in Tampa Bay But we moved around between Tampa Clearwater and St. Pete's for a few days and their craft beer scene is definitely alive and kicking And there's a ton of breweries here But my favorite is Grand Central Brew House in St. Petersburg or St. Pete's So when you see these horizontal fermenters, you know the beer is gonna be good Actually, the beer was great and this was when I was going through my dark lager phase so it stood out even more. The owners were nice enough to give us a tour and show us their process and if you have a T-Swifty poster in your brew house it's making my video. Number three. This one we're going to Portland. Not Portland, Maine, but Portland, Oregon. Portland is awesome. There's definitely a ton of craft beer action in Portland. My favorite cities are the small ones you can walk around in and you can get away with that in some parts of Portland but definitely not all parts. Uber and public transportation are going to be a go-to. But my third favorite brewery, I got to pay homage to this brand because they got me into home brewing more than any other beer and that's the shoot. Back in the early days of this channel, we would always try and clone the beers we liked and then drink them side by side with blindfolds on to see how close we got. And I know that Deschute started in Bend, Oregon, but they also do production in Portland. So it's a brewery, I'm counting it. And I used to buy pine drops and fresh squeezed IPA all the time in San Diego, but I don't see it out here, which makes me want it even more. If you see these beers at a store, get them, they're great. And if you make it to Portland or Bend, Deschutes is a must call. Number two. For number two, we're staying in Portland as well. And this is the only brewery that I've ever had a reoccurring dreams about. Great notion. And this place is absolutely perfect. I remember when I was there, all I had were amazing sours and hazies, like as good as it gets sours and hazies. The establishment is super homey. The kitchen is incredible. And I'm looking around and I'm filming people, obviously without their permission. And I didn't see one person staring at their phone. Everybody here seemed like they appreciated it. Portland's their first location, but you can find them in Washington and NorCal. This brewery would be number one on my list if I never went to Asheville. But before we talk about number one, I want to say a couple things. I went to Sierra Nevada and it was amazing, but I was only 18 at the time. I was trying to see if I should go to college at Chico and I was too young to drink their beer and truly appreciated it, but the establishment was phenomenal and I did want to give them some love in this video. And I got to get up to Treehouse too. We talk about them way too much on the stream. Nate, I'm coming up this summer. Let's drink some beers and get lost in each other's eyes. And lastly, I want to say something about a brewery in Knoxville. I know I said I wouldn't talk about it, but I lie like scum. Zool Beer Company. I've never seen a brewery like 
like it. It's not the biggest brewery, but it's always rocking seven days a week. And you know when you go into a place, and it doesn't matter what the place is, it could be a restaurant or a coffee shop or a burger joint or a pizza place or whatever, but you can just tell everything's flowing like a well-oiled machine, almost kind of like a symphony. Well, that's Zool. So if you're ever in Knoxville, you have to check out Zool. And if you've ever heard of the peanut butter and jelly sour, you got to be there the day of. And if you want to watch the brew show and I attempt to clone this recipe, subscribe to both of our channels. All right my favorite brewery in America. Number one, we are going to the San Francisco of the South for this one. If you watch my channel, you know what city I'm talking about. The city where I met these guys, the city where I met these guys, the city where I met these guys, the city that got me to leave California. Best decision I have ever made, except I wish I did it 10 years ago, Asheville, North Carolina. But there's a ton of great breweries in Asheville. But if I had to choose one, I think my mind's made up. What about you, Emmett? I wanna know what your favorite brewery in Asheville is. Um, Burial for sure. Absolutely. I've never had a bad beer at Burial Beer Co. No matter what style, I've never had a bad moment at Burial. When it's slow, when it's packed, it doesn't matter. It's the ultimate brewery. And I didn't even know about Asheville up until two years ago. And I don't think any of the 7 trillion people in California have heard of Asheville either, but put it on your radar. I could do a whole other video on my top five favorite breweries in Asheville, but uh, I've probably already done that. I don't know. There's definitely a ton of great breweries in Asheville but there's got to be one. Thank you for watching my video. I'm sorry I don't really put out content the way I used to, but if you subscribe to my channel, it'll motivate me to put out more content and it'll make my life less stressful. Cheers.